say that they are troubling is an understatement. Amen. It's an understatement to say that the gifts of the past we have been troubling. Um, but I want to encourage the people of God, all the saints of God, I want to encourage you that it does not matter what side of the political spectrum you place yourself. It does not matter where you decide to cast your loyalties. The fact of the matter is, if you were counting on some man or woman in government to make a way for your life and somehow change your predicament, I'm sorry, your hope is misplaced. Your hope is misplaced. Our hope should only be in Jesus Christ. There are people that said, well, there's nothing wrong with what happened on Thursday. There are those that say the president should be impeached because of it. There are those that say don't do anything, so just make his base stronger. There are those that say uh, he really didn't do anything to cause the act of their own accord. It was just something that got out of hand. There's people that say if it had been 30,000 people marching for Black Lives Matter and if they did it, they would have all been shot. True. All that stuff is going on. <laughs> but I want you to know that all of that chatter is irrelevant. It's all irrelevant. The fact of the matter is, we just need to be saved. And not uh, just us, but those that were there, the Proud Boys need to be saved. The Catholics that pretty much run the country and the government, they need to be saved. The Republican needs to be saved. Yes, sir. The Democrat needs to be saved. Yes, the Black Lives Matter folks need to be saved. Yeah. Guess what? You and I, we need to be saved. That's right. And one thing about it I've learned, God has never, ever been slack according to his promise. He will always take care of his people. Yeah. Doesn't matter who's in the White House. God is going to take care of us. That's why when Hawkins wrote that song, be not this man. Whatever be time, God will take care. Take care. All right. Let's get into Psalm 91. 91 and 1 is one of the most familiar passages in the entire written book. I'm going to ask you to explain to go ahead and read Psalm 91. And one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Stop right there. Stop right there. You can have your seat. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. We're talking about the secret place. We're going to talk about the secret place, all right? All right. Yeah. The word dwells is not one that we use every day. You might hear from time to time someone say, quit dwelling on that, or why are you dwelling on the past? In other words, when people say it, they're indicating that you are clearly stuck on some idea or problem or situation or event. But the biblical definition brings out a whole different perspective. It is defined as to sit down, to remain, to settle, to marry, make to keep a house, and to return. Yes. Most of the words you describe well in the Bible indicate it is a permanent 
address. It's not a motel. It's not an RV. It's not a travel trailer that we use when we go on camping vacations. We are not stuck when we dwell in the secret place. To dwell means to set up housekeeping, plant some flowers, grow some trees, hang some pictures, go ahead and get married and settle down. Be fruitful and multiply, have some children. Keep the house clean, keep the grass cut, keep the trees trimmed, keep the house painted and fresh. All the promises of this song hinge on this very first phrase. I got to tell you, saints, dwelling is not an option. Oh, God, I got to say that one more time. Dwelling is not an option. Ooh, oh, I feel good already. Yes, sir. It's not an option. Dwelling is a must if we want to experience the benefits listed, not just in this song, but in the whole Word of God. You're going to have to dwell and commune with God. And no, you don't get to pick and choose when you want to do it. Oh, man. Oh, Lord, I said something right there. You and I don't get to pick and choose when we're going to dwell with our Savior. A lot of folks like to dwell with him. Well, I like to dwell with him Wednesday through Saturday so that I'm ready for Sunday. But Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there's some things I got to get done. And I got to cut him out of the equation because there's some things that I want to do. And I kind of put my dwelling to the side so that I can, you know, call Sally, go see Big Jim, so that I can smoke a few trees. Amen. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. But what does this word mean to us personally? And what does it mean to the Lord? I told you God took me through an exegesis of this book, of this song. And it's kind of lengthy. So like I said, uh, I don't know if we're going to get past this very first verse. But we're going to do our best, as long as the Lord keeps us going, to get through as many of these verses as we can. Here's one thing I found out. Uh, you must always study to show yourself approved. Okay? Many of us misapply and misinterpret scripture. And it's important that we, in this day and age, you better be able to go back and know this word for yourself. Right. Someone challenged me not too long ago. And they said, uh, Pastor, uh, uh, when uh, 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 in the New Testament, it doesn't really talk about homosexual, I said, it talks about homosexuality all over the place. Mm. And they said, well, on social media, especially on the platform, TikTok, they said that on TikTok, they've got this meme going out there, this poster out there that says that uh, the Bible does not condemn homosexuality. The only thing it condemns was pedophilia. Mm. That's it. But there's nothing wrong with homosexuality. They want to go back to the point when Jesus said, let the little ones come to me and if any of these be offended, etc. So you all know that. They want to go just to that point right there. They said, there is another translation of the Bible that's older than the one we use. In which, that's what it speaks to. So, I said, okay. Give me a few minutes. And I'll come back to you with an answer. Missionary Armenia Slay. I went ahead and looked at the verse of the Bible they're talking about. From somewhere around between the 14 and uh, 1200s, 1600, sorry, German script. 
And yes, in that version, that's what it said. In that version. And so at first I said, I said, I said, okay, God, now that's what this says, but you have to help me because I know what your word really says. So God, in his infinite wisdom, said, son, just go back and look at the Torah. All you gotta do, go look at the Torah. The original Hebrew text. So I did. Guess what I found out? In the original Hebrew text, you know what it says? Man shall not lie down to have sexual activities with other men. And if men can't do it, women can't do it either. Well, that's right, that's right. And it says, guess what? You cannot sell your children to a Roman emperor for sexual favors so that you can get ahead. All right. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So it was my delight to go back with the answer. Why are you telling us that, preacher? Because in this day and age, people are going to try to attack the gospel that you believe. And you had better know the word so that you can present the word convincingly. We must know the word. So if y'all don't mind, first of all, I take a few weeks off of the hooping and hollering. If I can just teach, is that okay? Amen. Can I just do that? Because I, I don't know about you, but I'd rather be saved than have a good shot. Yes, sir. Woo, I'll say that one more time. I'd rather be saved than have a good shot. Two yes, shots don't save nobody. That's just exercise. Hey, man. Ooh, I wish y'all could see some of y'all's faces right now. <laughs> uh, let's look at the Hebrew spelling of the word dwell. Now, you scholars know that when you read Hebrew, you always read it what? Right to left. You don't read it left to right. You read Hebrew right to left. I was watching, who were we watching? Me and my wife were watching one of those the uh, gospel movies the other day and they were writing Hebrew and I said oh, that's just wrong right there she said what? she said they're writing from left to right they don't do that they go from right to left amen so here is the word dwell in Hebrew bet sheen yod yod means the outcome the completion of something, the hand, the right arm, the right hand of God's power, a deed done to work, to cover, to allow, hollow, and also refers to the Holy Spirit as it is always in the air overseeing us. Shin means victory of good over evil or the Holy Spirit. If, uh, if it was drawn as a picture, how many, I don't know if you guys know, the Hebrew is the only language in the entire existence of man where the letters not only have a sound, a word, a definition, and a picture that go all along with it. It's the one and only language that does that. The only one. So, shin as a picture is fire or teeth of fire meaning the fiery zeal of God to consume all of his enemies to devour and destroy the enemies of God that's a lot just from one word huh and then bet which is divide or division but it really comes into uh uh the division that's basically separate, kind of like we live in separate housing divisions, that's what it's talking about. So it means house, family, God's word, God's dwelling place. So really when it says, he that dwelleth, we didn't got to the secret place. When it just says, he that dwelleth, this is what it really says. 
He who dwells is one who's made the choice to live permanently in God's house, trusting in God and honoring his word. That's bet. There he will experience the activation of God's right hand of power covering him. And God in his fiery zeal will consume all that tries to keep him or draw him away from dwelling. Are you still with me? Y'all understand that? So just the simple act of dwelling means you made the choice to live permanently in God's house. Oh my God. <laughs> just the simple act of dwelling says, I have made up my mind. I'm going to stay with Jesus. And I'm going with Jesus all the way. That's why we sing that song. And Lord, have you seen it? I think a couple of weeks ago right here. I'm going with Jesus all the way. I'm going with Jesus all the way. And it makes no difference what the people say. Say, I'm going with Jesus all the way. Hey, I'm sorry, I just feel good right there. Come on, man, you feel good right there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sticking with Jesus. Ah, okay, not right now. I'm trying to switch. Oh, oh, oh. But if you stick with Jesus, shout, I'm going with Jesus. Oh, All the way. Oh, yeah, so he who dwells is one who's made the choice to live permanently, Dr. Smith. Yes, sir. In God's house. Yeah. Trusting in God. Yeah. Honoring his word. Y'all know what that means to honor his word? Yes, sir. Honor God's word. Be holy. The devil is a liar. Honor God's word. And when you get there, you experience the activation of God's right hand of power. It will cover you. How do you know that God's right hand is enough to cover you? Oh my God, I feel good right there. Just his right hand is enough to cover you. That's all you need. Huh? Just his hand. When he hit Moses in the cleft of the rock, he didn't say his whole body covered. He said, no, I shook my hand. That's enough to cover you. And God in his fiery zeal will consume all that try to draw you away from dwelling. Wait a minute. God has enough Holy Ghost fire to defeat everything or everyone that wants to pull me away from dwelling with him? Yes. The answer is yes. yes. That's why Isaiah wrote, no weapon formed against me yes. shall prosper. prosper. Yes. They already knew him on this text. Y'all just bear with me. I, I feel good when I see this. Yes, sir. I feel good because it reminds me, Dr. Charles, I don't have to worry yes, about what the enemy brings my way. Yes. I don't have to worry about what people talk inside. I've got a God on my side that's fighting for me. Yes. He's already said that everything that comes against me, oh, he's got some fire. Yes. Woo! Yes. He's got some fire. That'll consume my enemies. I think it was the book of Mark when uh, the disciples said, Hey, Jesus, they cut up over here. Shall we call down fire from heaven? Huh? And Jesus said, No, you ain't got to worry about that. You don't have to do that. That fire's coming in just a few more days. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and, and that stuck out to me firstly. That means they already had knowledge of this particular text. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> ah! So when you all hear me say things like Holy Ghost fire, that's what this is. I'm asking God to consume the enemies that are working in your life. Oh, y'all, you catch that? If y'all ever hear me say Holy Ghost fire, what I'm really asking God is, God, Slay got something going on. And Lord, we need your fire to consume the enemy that's chasing after her, that's trying to steal her joy, that's trying to make her depressed, that's trying to keep her fearful. I'm asking you, come now. There's sickness in our body. Holy Ghost fire, consume it. Oh, y'all.